what was in here? Welcome to today's 3D print. That's what was in here. I got a Maker Select, including some upgrade. I got the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End. There it goes. And I got the replacement extruder gear. I'm also going to, if I can figure out how to, and if it works, I'm going to extend the vertical by 16 inches. So this is going to be fun. The package is some instructions. We will be following these. It looks like it actually might include the angled screen. We'll find out. I believe we're looking at the back of the gantry. Ooh. Will you look at that? I actually got the updated version with the angled screen. So I don't get to print that little upgrade. Gantry, bed. Actually, it looks like it comes with two sheets of the material. The build tax style material. Looks like there's one already on there. And it looks like they did a test print on my printer. A little butterfly. Raft and a little butterfly. Oh, new trinket. I'll be back. Okay, looks like the first step will be to remove the zip tie holding the XZ access unit together and then slide the base in between and secure it with the included um, four millimeter wrench. You do need to be careful because these three parts are connected. They don't actually disconnect from each other. Uh, we'll be back for the next step. Okay, I believe that hole right there will be lining up with that hole. Oh, I got another threaded hole there. I'm assuming that's not where it goes though. I'm assuming the threading goes into that hole. Because lining up two threaded holes would be pretty difficult. So I'm not sure. Oh, wait a minute, there's another hole here. Okay, so one goes in through this side, and one goes in through this side. Okay, so there's two on each side. I'll be back once I dig them out of probably inside that box. Might as well add a quickie of what's in the box. There is a micro SD card, looks like four gigabytes. I'll be replacing this with a full-size SD card. I already have the micro to full-size adapter coming in the mail. This is to be a typical USB cable. A typical computer power supply cable. This looks like the bag of the screws and Allen keys and whatnot that I will need in zip ties. Looks like this and this form the spool holder. And the putty knife for removing my trinkets and gizmos from the printing bed. And that's it. The box is empty. I'll be back. It appears to come with an actual full surface kit. I only have six machine screws. Four will be to attach the bed to the rest of the tower. And two will be to attach the spool holder. My guess is these are all the wrenches for all of the machine screws on this printer. That's actually pretty cool of them to include them. So you know you have the right sizes. I mean, it probably only cost them a few pennies to add it, so why not? Thank you. Credit where credit is due. I was impressed. I was able to finger tighten all four bolts in place. Took a little finagling and twiggling, but I was able to thread them all the way in by hand with just my fingers. That's a good sign. I mean, they're machined relatively well, and their alignment and cutting is relatively good. So now I'm going to tighten them with a wrench. Next up is to undo the cable tie holding these wires together. And I will have to place these each in their place. I'm assuming that this one will connect to here, one of them will connect to here. And I will read the directions for where to connect the rest of them. Okay, the shortest goes here. This one obviously goes here, even though we're not at that stage in the directions yet. I'm installing it now, since I'm going to stand the machine up now. Since I believe these two are going up the tower. I'll be right back. 
they are very cleanly marked as you can see a a this one has a d which means it goes into this one b and b c and c very nice from what people have described to me you need to be particularly careful with these these are the um i don't know what to call it um homing end switch this tells the machine to stop when it hits that so when this comes down here and presses this it knows to stop when the bed comes over and presses that switch at some point there it goes i heard it so something underneath here is hitting it oh there it is back there oh yeah the frame back there touches it okay so that little frame piece down there that slide rail will press against this to tell it when it's reached the limit of its travel for I think for homing I'm not a hundred percent sure on that but that's what I understand I'll be back uh, it's pretty obvious but this I believe you call this a, um, a chain guide um, this is clearly supposed to be attached here like this one is up here there's nothing in the instructions regarding this so I'm assuming that it simply came out in shipment. Wires look fine. I don't see any problem there. So I'm just going to attach it. I assume I can push this in. There's a little bit of wiggling. I don't have to put the phone down to do this. Yep, require two hands. Just put your finger in here and you can push this out just enough. And it pops right in without much resistance at all no problem and that one attaches up there I see how that works cool nice and we shall move on the next step is to remove the nut slide it onto the stamp steel mount and reinsert the nut they were both facing the same direction so I reversed this nut so that I would have two flat surfaces against the metal. That just seems to be better for me. I also noticed this comes off too. Not sure why, but I guess you can take that off. This will bolt on top of here like this, using the last two screws the printer comes with. And that's how you feed your yummy, delicious filament into the printer. There we go. Installation is complete. There we go. One of my plans for this printer is to extend this wire and extend this nest of wires and replace the lead screw and the guide shaft with longer versions since that's all you need to do. Literally, just get some more steel, remove this and this, extend it up to whatever height you desire, and reinstall it again with your insert in place and you can increase the build height i've already got the shaft the linear shafts slide rail whatever that's called i already got these i have these on the way and then um, once i've used the printer for a bit i will work on extending this so that i can have a taller printer the next process is to set the nozzle height to level the bed to zero it um, I have to tighten these all the way to fully compress, so I'm assuming I have to remove the tape, of course, even though that's not mentioned in the instructions. So I'm going to do that now. Remove the tape. Tighten these all to full compression. Follow the instructions it gives me to bring this to the zero height, and then adjust these until it's the proper distance away from the nozzle. That's bed leveling. Okay. Everything's together. I believe I followed all the instructions. And I removed the plastic. I should have recorded that, but whatever. Now let's see what the next step is. The next step is to turn the printer on and wait until it's ready. And then... I will have to... I'm not going to go through all this on video, but I'll have to follow these directions for moving the printer into startup position, homing, and leveling. I will record where appropriate. Alright, I kind of skipped that step, but I will show it to you anyway. The idea was to use position and 
Z fast in order to um, move the carriage out of the way so that you could access the bed to tighten these screws. I've already done that, but just to show you, if I turn the knob down, oh, I'm out of it. So you press the button, press the button, go down to position, go down to Z position fast, and now when I move this, when I move this, the Z axis moves. That's pretty cool. I'll be back. The next step is to go to home all. So press position, press home all. Now it's going to do whatever it does. It's tapping its switches. Wow, the Z really is slow, but I guess it really doesn't need to be fast. It's not like it's going to move very fast while it's printing. Interesting to watch when it comes down. It comes back up and it goes down again. Okay, it's homed. And I am now to turn the printer off. And now I will use a piece of paper and manually move this corner to corner to corner to corner center in multiple locations. Of course, I'm not showing you that on the video. I'm dumb. Okay, I will manually move this and this to each of the corners, level the bed, move it all over the bed, center different places until I have it all adjusted to it's just about level. They define level as being able to just fit a piece of paper between the bed and the nozzle. I will get to that. I got a halfway decent home. Got a nice slight tension underneath the piece of paper when I slide it in there. I hope that's sufficient. I will tweak and adjust as necessary. Now it is time to preheat and feed. The printer's hungry. It says, feed me filament. Now we go into quick settings and we go to preheat PLA. Ah, yes it is. It's working. Bed's heating up. And that's heating up. Although I don't need the bed for PLA. What the hell. I'll be back once it gets hot. Now that we are close to the extrusion temperature, we go into extruder. And we go to extruder position. And we insert the filament into here while we turn the knob until we feel the extruder grab the filament and draw it through and then we continue to draw it until the filament comes out basically loading the filament into the printer hey the print bed is hot <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if I can do this with the camera we're gonna try I feel resistance put the camera down. There we go. It's slurping it up. You can see it drawing it in. And we will do that until it comes out the hole in the bottom. It's definitely drawing it in. There it comes. We got goo. It's liquid plastic. Alright. The next step is to print a sample off the SD card. Which is what I will do. I pick the first file. It's now doing its... I'm assuming it's doing its auto home. Because this just moved over to the homing switch. This just moved back to the homing switch. It waited it until it reached these temperatures. It looks like it was pre-configured for 195, 
I do 55 or 50. Bed slowly coming down. It waited until it got the extruder to the 195 temperature that it had preset. I'm simply printing whatever's on the memory card. There's four files. It just says 1.g code, whatever that means. So I assume this is going to go down to what homes, and then it will begin to do its black magic work. Looks like I got it pretty level. It's printing whatever it is it's printing. I have no idea what it is. But um, the first time I printed it was a butterfly. I didn't want another butterfly, so I stopped it. But um, I found that this end of the bed was a little low. So I just adjusted the screws as it was printing the raft until it got a nice stick. And I knew I had it good. So, let's see what this looks like. That's about it for now. I'll make a new video of whatever it is that prints. But there you have it. I have my Maker Select printer set up and ready to go. Got my favorite orange. What is it called? Exavon filament, twelve ninety nine a kilogram, and it prints beautifully. I make nice things like like this with it. This stopped halfway through because of the extruder problem I was having, but yeah, I like the orange filament. More to come.